Hi, I'm Deborah Rosati, founder and CEO of Women Get On Board, and this is Women Get On Board in Conversation. The goal of our Women Get On Board in Conversation video series is to empower women on their board journey. Our goal is to inspire you and give you confidence and courage to lead and serve on corporate boards. Today, I am pleased to be speaking with Richard Barber. He is a C-level executive, and he's going to talk about his recent blog, Unleashing the Power of AI with Responsible Governance. Welcome, Richard, and thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you so much, Deborah. Thanks for uh, inviting me today. Great. Um, so yeah, we're going so to just... start it. And so maybe but for context, Richard, if you could give us a little background about yourself, and how you got interested in AI with responsible governance, because that's how I stopped you <laughs> from your blog. So maybe you can share your background and and where and how that interest peaked for you. Yeah, so yeah. Thanks, thanks for the question, Deborah. Yeah. So, um, so as you mentioned, I'm a C level executive. I'm also a board director uh, on the Governance Professionals of Canada uh, and another board as well. And uh, and I've been on board since 2014. So, um, you know, and my executive roles have have included leading sales and marketing at Computer Share, which uh, you know is 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 in the shareholder and governance space. So, so between my board work and C level roles, I, I've been interested in governance and and I have both a technical and business background. So as as the uh, you know, as the interest in AI has been growing in popularity, uh, you know, my interest has has also been growing, and 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 then as generative AI. So if you think of Chat GPT as kind of the poster child of the applications that are out there, um, once that took off last year, um, I started asking boards and senior management, you know, so how things are, how are things going with AI? How are things going with you know the governance of AI? Like what you know, what are your latest thoughts or whatever? And I was getting a lot of blank stares. So. Um, uh, so I thought, you know, I should really uh, look into this a little bit more. And, and there seems to be two camps of people that I've found. There's, there, there's, you know, is AI going to be, you know, create an extension, uh, extension event for the world, or, or is it, um, or is it just full of opportunities and applications that we should be taking advantage of? And, and so there's lots of interest, positive or negative. But I, I just didn't hear much about AI governance. So, so for me, I want to help, you know, companies leverage the the AI for good and 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 also help them avoid the. Uh, uh, the real risks from AI gone wrong. So, uh, so that's just a bit about me. Well, thank you. And I think I, I like the approach on AI for good. I've just been recent. There's, there's a lot, there's, I, I think a movement or a group that's forming with the likes of some of the big players, Microsoft, mm -hmm. Google and Meta. Um, and, and, you know, and I think when you think about AI, I like how you've described it as two camps, right? It's here though. It's not going away. This so, is not a fad. This is not a fad. So <laughs> maybe you can share a little bit about the blog that you wrote about unleashing the power of AI with the responsible governance. Um, what was your objective behind that blog? And what type of follow-up have you had on this blog? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so, so what I found is, you know, many people are are not familiar with AI. So, so I wanted to learn more about it myself than help others, you know, from a governance perspective. And I, I, I wrote the blog on LinkedIn. Uh, so if you want to see it, you can just go to my, uh, you know, Richard Barber ICD is typically a quick way to find me on LinkedIn, and you can uh, read it there in my in my uh, posts. Um, but I wrote it in a very short and simple way, so it's easy to understand. Um, but I also included many links to more detail if people want to dive deeper. So it's it's very approachable, and and so uh, partially because of that, and I think just the general interest in AI, uh, you know, the response has been very strong, and I'm finding, um, you know, that I'm I'm talking to a lot of people, and they're interested uh, in AI in a lot of different ways, wherever their starting point is, and. Um, so aside from this interview, uh, which is uh, which is great, um, you know, I'm also presenting at the uh, the GPC conference uh, mid August. Um, we got a one hour uh, kind of panel session on AI, and uh, I'm also doing some board presentations and training, uh, including that for uh, for the diligent AI uh, uh, program. So so the response has been quite positive, and 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 the other thing that I'm enjoying is people are providing me, um, you know, with their favorite AI applications and their learning sources and that type of thing. So it's it's great to be uh, connecting with people on that. So you could almost say your blog was generative in its form. Ah, hey, there you go. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> so you go a little deeper in your blog and you identify three areas that boards should be thinking about and C-level executives in the emerging topics of AI. You've got risk, 
ESG and governance. Can you sort mm -hmm. of, can you speak to, to each of those areas? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So for, for risk, I guess I'll just focus on a couple areas, you know, how AI is being used and, and then also the regulations. So, so I think the first place to start is finding out, you know, how your organization is using AI. Um, and I kind of think of, of that in, in two different buckets as well. So the first one is what I call ad hoc. Uh, and the second one is company directed. Um, and, and so what we really want to know is, you know, how are the boards, how are management and how are employees, uh, how are they using AI and what are they using it for? And, and at this point, actually, many people can't answer that question. Um, but there was a recent Canadian survey that, that showed that, um, you know, 20% of employees in Canada are using generative AI and about 10 to 15% of them are entering company confidential information or using it uh, for you. So they're putting in company financials, supply chain information, product information, and, and they're doing this so they can get the benefit of AI. So, so let, let's just rewind for a second. So a lot of this is related to chat GPT and, and the data that is being used in that model ends at 2021. So it's, it's, it's about a couple of years old. And so for people to use it, you know, Hey, help me with this, you know, financial analysis, help me with this new product launch, help me with go to market strategy, whatever it is. Um, if you're wanting to get the benefit for your company, you actually have to give it more recent information and possibly more specific information for your company. And that sounds great, except that you're providing company confidential information to a, you know, a, a website where it's unclear uh, where that information could go. So, um, so there's definitely data privacy and confidentiality is an issue to be thinking about. Can anyway, we so pause on that for a minute? Yes. I do think you've had a really, um, really topical matter is where do you think companies or where are companies in, incorporating that into their policy? Is it a data privacy policy? Is it like, are we getting AI generative policies now? Like, what are you seeing? Like, how do you manage that from a risk perspective? Yeah, yeah. And we will get into that. I mean, in a sense, the the the, the data and, and privacy policies are already in place. And and so there are, you know, in these 10 to 15 percent of the, the people that are using generative AI um, are... Um, uh, are already kind of violating that in a sense. Um, you, you know, you'd almost think you'd hear more about it because under any other circumstances, uh, I think, um, you know, you'd have the internal and external auditors kind of doing a lot more and maybe, and in some cases they are. So I'm not saying that, that, that everything is completely blind, but but in that sense, the data and privacy policies are already in place, but the AI uh, policies, are, and we'll get to that in a minute about kind of best practices, that's one of the first places to start. But that means that, that AI is actually being talked about and being managed. And um, and so there's even some things to do even before that, but absolutely we need to get AI policies in place. At any rate, so that was that's kind of the ad hoc group. Um, you, you know, as we talked about people just kind of using it for, you know, if they're using chat GPT or we were before this call, we were talking about otter.ai for, for kind of being your partner on Zoom calls or meetings to kind of, you know, do uh, transcripts and, and summaries and that type of thing. So that's another another popular tool. But um, there's another group w which I call company directed. And that's that's really, uh, you know, if you were thinking of talking to the, say, the marketing group or the product development or service development group, you know, what are what's the company actually targeting to, uh, you know, for the benefit of the organization? What, what, what AI apps and, and, and approaches are they using? So there's, there's those two buckets, but again, you have to be kind of uh, be talking about the uh, this topic to kind of get into that. Um, now, so to find out how your company's using AI, I mean, you could ask HR or IT to reach out to the organization, but I expect that uh, uh, employees would probably respond better to a third party anonymous survey at this point. So that's... Uh, uh, that's kind of the um, the uh, how we're using AI perspective. And then the, the second part is regulation. Um, so regulation's coming. Um, China uh, actually has their regulations now announced to be coming uh, into effect on August 15th. Um, and um, and Europe should have their AI regulations uh, passed this year. And Canada is expected to have the digital charter pass within a year. And, and these documents are already out there. Europe's been out there for a couple of, the draft's been out there for a couple of years. Canada's been out there for a year. You, you know, you can read up on those um, and see where the regulations are going. But it's expected that organizations, uh, you know, above a certain size um, are going to need to publish how they're using AI on their company website in plain language and also have a risk management system um, uh, to manage both harm and bias. Um, and penalties are steep, like up to $10 million or 3% of global revenue. And then 
and uh, you know, and you're you're asking about uh, privacy. Well, the the privacy legislation, as we currently know, um, is actually going to be rewritten to factor in AI, and that's all going to be part of the digital charter. So, and they're they're going to be more like the European standards and and that type of thing. So. Um, you know, and then there's going to be a phase in period. Okay. So the regulation's coming and there's going to be a phase in period, but, but I believe that the companies that are actually um, managing AI and having these discussions and, and governing it, not just from a risk perspective, but also capturing the opportunities, they will, I believe that they will have an advantage and surpass the competition versus those who are just waiting back and doing the minimum and that, that type of thing. So that's kind of on the risk side. Then uh, from an ESG perspective, um, you know, let's talk about environment. You say, well, what does AI have to do with the environment? That, that doesn't seem to make any, se any sense, except that AI uses a lot of computing power. You know, we're talking data centers and, you know, um, it uses a lot uh, of power and carries a large carbon footprint. And, and so for many companies, right, uh, you know, ESG has been a popular topic for quite a while and people are putting together their net zero, zero carbon emissions um, plans and dates. And uh, I guess what I'm suggesting is they probably want to take another look at that and factor in what their AI carbon footprint is and, and how that's going to be growing because AI is growing exponentially. The use is going to be growing exponentially. And and uh, and and so is the carbon footprint. So that's that's kind of an environment perspective. Yeah. And then on social, uh, you know, there's there's bias and ethics concerns, um, uh, you know, personal example. So for people taking a look at my blog, um, there's an image that I created for that. And I used it on um, I, I, I created this on Bing.com. So so Bing is not really the most popular search engine or hasn't been, but it's gaining a lot of popularity because it's got this chat function built in now to a AI application called Dolly, where you could just type in, hey, create me an, an image of you know whatever you're thinking of, and and there you go, it it, it pops up. So so I created this image, said create me an image of board directors sitting around a uh, you know a boardroom table looking at an AI robot. You know, sounds simple, right? Except that guess who the people were sitting around the board table? Any, any guesses? Young kids? <laughs> Young kids, no. No, it was, uh, first of all, it was all men. And secondly, the best that you could uh, tell, they were they were white men. And, you know, it's, so... There's so much bias there, right? Like, that's yeah, just... It's just uh, yeah. So if you think of all the data set that chat that, that in that case, Dolly, which is an open eye uh, AI application, um, you know, it's 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 uh, the data includes, you know, all of Wikipedia, most of what's in the Internet. It's scanning all this stuff and it just kind of put it in there. And it's just the bias that's built into the data that it's using. And uh, so then so so obviously that was the wrong example for the for the for the blog image. So then I had to go back and say, OK, can you make this a little more diverse? Can we have some women in here? Can we get some more diversity in this thing? And then it came back and now you can see what it looks like on, on the blog. And, and so it looks like a little bit more respectable uh, group around that table. But that's just now, now in that case, there's probably not as many ethical concerns or whatever. But think about if you're using, um, you know, uh, generative AI for your uh, hiring practices and you have them screen screening applications and who gets to the second and third round interviews. The next thing you know, the data bias is all built into who's getting through. Like, uh, you know, this is, that's creating not only bias issues, but, but ethical concerns. So who's looking at this stuff? Um, so that's kind of the social side of things. And then from a governance perspective, we've already kind of talked about, you know, that there's a risk that many organizations just don't have AI, AI as part of their overall governance yet. It's not part of the board risk oversight and it's not in the risk management framework. Um, so it's kind of a blind spot and, and AI is building a lot of momentum. I mean, whatever expression you like, the trains left the station, the horse is out of the barn, like it's already happening, uh, yet it's not in many cases being talked about. So so that's just a little bit of, of the background on on, on some of the um, well, uh, those, those topics. It's quite clear that you're very passionate about it and it is, it's already come. So you're like, okay, from a governance perspective, um, we're going to go into the next question. But one pause I want to make is that when you really think about AI and governance is that, um, you know, from a board perspective, you know, as you continue to grow and evolve and have board renewal, what are you seeing? Because this is before I go to best practices, but what are you seeing? Are you seeing committees of the board being formed in having an AI digital governance committee? Um, is it fitting under audit committee, which uh, everyone shoves everything into the audit committee, which is not the right place? Is it going under ESG sustainability as this continues to emerge in cybersecurity and risk, or is it going into a risk committee? What are you seeing as it's emerging? Where where does it 
other than the overall board's oversight role, where are you seeing it kind of getting a home within committee structures? Mm -hmm. So if you, the, the organizations that are kind of leading the charge on this are, you know, the larger, you know, uh, tech and social media companies. So you'd already kind of mentioned, you know, Microsoft and Meta and, 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 um, and open AI and that type of thing. So they, they, they've come at this from a technology angle. So they're, they're on top of the governance, but they're coming at it from the technology angle. But I guess anecdotally from, from, from the boards and management groups I've been talking to, there's, uh, you know, there's still early stages on this. They're just like, Oh, um, you know, I, I, I need to think about this more, you know, uh, so I, I'm not really seeing a trend yet for how this is being managed. It's more like, yeah, I, we need to be thinking about this, this and not sure, you know, what we should be doing, you know, and, and by the way, we don't have really anybody on the board that knows much about this or, or even in the senior management team, other than maybe the CIO, right? So as it evolves in its presence. Yeah. Yep. What are you seeing out there with respect to some of the best practices that boards should should consider to ensure responsible AI governance? Because they have an oversight role. So exactly. what are some of the best practices that you're seeing out there? Yeah. So so if we just start with the basics, I think the first thing is, you know, for boards to get their arm around is just, you know, who is using AI and for what? So that's number one. Um, and then second uh, is, and we, we talked about this briefly, was was a policy. So there, there should be an AI policy in place. Um, and, uh, you know, we need to have something to point to. If you have 20% of your employees using generative AI on a public website, um, what is the policy around that? So, we, you know, so data privacy and confidentiality should be factored into that. Um, and I've heard of some companies that once they learn that, you know, whether it's 20% or it doesn't matter. Once they learn that employees are, are kind of using some of these public websites, they just shut off uh, access to it. So they shut off access to chat GPT and other, other. So, you know, that might solve a little bit of a risk problem, but then it doesn't promote the employees to uh, in the company to get the benefits of AI. So, so this is really a, a you know, a balancing act of, of risk and benefits. And so I'm just going to, this isn't so much of a technical conversation, but I'm just going to go on a little bit of a detour into the, the four types of AI design because it kind of relates to the, you know, the privacy and confidentiality. Okay. The I'll call you professor. Okay. Professor Baker. <laughs> Barber, yeah. yes. Okay. Barber, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I know a baker um, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, could be. Um, so the first one's the one we just talked about with the web access. So chat GPT, you know, uh, is prime example. And um, uh, so that one has, uh, you know, easy access, but it's also got, the, you know, the least privacy and, 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 and data kind of control. Um, you can also what they call, uh, use what they call APIs or application programming interfaces. So that's like, if you have applications within your organization, you can have a direct link into say open AI or other uh, AI providers. And, and so it's controlled within your application and you have a little bit more control about how that's being used. You can, uh, the third one is, is having an enterprise uh, agreement with some of the AI providers and that that can factor in uh you know the, the you know the privacy and confidentiality kind of um uh, terms and in, in how it's being used and then the fourth one is to build it in-house and you may be saying build it in-house i mean we just spent the last how many years putting everything into the cloud and now you're telling me we're going to bring in servers and it people and ai specialists so but that is the most secure but so there's those four kind of approaches and um and so, you know, management, you know, primarily needs to think about that, how they want to execute it. But there's those degrees of uh, of kind of um, confidentiality as you move through those four types of AI design. Um, so, yes. Did, did you have a question or comment on that? Yeah, I was I was listening and my question yeah. was, what do you think, like you said, you kind of go to extreme in being in-house, build yeah. your own, do it to you know, what's out there. What do you see is probably the most popular? Are we, is it somewhere from, you know, that first yeah, approach I think to using, the, the I think if you're going to use it kind of to balance the risk and the opportunities, I think either using APIs with your existing tools and your, the IT groups will be very familiar with this um, or, and, or having an enterprise agreement. So if you're going to be using it on a regular basis, you know what, um, you know, open AI is an example. They're very used to this. They know all the concerns that people have. They're very, you know, you know, so there's, there's ways to manage this in a way that, that helps you, um, capture the opportunities, but also, uh, you know, avoid the, uh, the, the risks of putting your company information kind of out to a, an AI tool that could get to your comp competition as an example. Um, so Richard, so, yeah. we can continue this conversation because clearly 
you're passionate and very knowledgeable, but I'm mindful of our time. So okay. what I would really love to do is kind of wrap up with, you know, what are some key takeaways you'd like our audience to go away with today? And where can they learn more about you and the work that you're doing? Right. So um, the first one, we kind of talked about it briefly, is that, you know, AI isn't going away. It's not a fad. So so even if you don't have a technical background, I recommend, you know, kind of learning more uh, about it. Um, and um, uh, the second is the, uh, you know, the risks are large. And so, um, you know, I would, uh, and there's, 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 um, approaches out there. There's approaches for an AI framework. There's, there's policy examples. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, and, um, and, uh, you, the, another thing is to really just get the board and management team, get it on, get it on the, uh, the board's oversight, uh, topics, get it on the, the management team's, uh, risk framework, um, and things will have, once it's on there, they're going to have to deal with it. And that will involve training and whatever else, um, uh, that they, uh, that they, that they want to do. Yep. And how can they, how can our, our audience find you and, and more about the work you do? Yeah. So, um, so for me, I'm, uh, so people can, you know, reach out to me at, uh, as I mentioned on the LinkedIn, it's uh, Richard Barber ICD. If you search for that, um, my email is also Barber uh, RD one. So that's Barber with two, uh, Barber R. So two R's Barber RD one at gmail.com. And just a bit about myself. So, um, you know, I'm building up obviously my knowledge on on uh, the inventory of tools to help boards uh, and management uh, work through the governance of AI. Uh, I'm also um, uh, doing consulting on this topic for both, uh, you know, governance uh, of AI, but as well as growth strategy. And I've been doing that type of work for uh, for many years. Um, and uh, part of the tools that I'm developing for the governance of AI is a, is a third party survey for organizations. So if they're looking to find out how is their organization using AI, um, what are the key risks and benefits? Um, you know, I've got a quick third party survey that, you know, employees will probably be more comfortable to uh, to respond to. Also getting it, have a, a process for a deeper dive. If you're looking for a full AI assessment, um, what are the risks, opportunities, what are the recommendations um, uh, can do that as well. Um, aside from that, looking for my uh, for my next uh, day job, uh, president of a um, uh, of a uh, of a company as well as a corporate board role. So uh, lots on the go. And um Looking forward to connecting with you again and uh, get deeper into this another time if, uh, if you like. Well, thank you. That's it for Women Get On Board in Conversation Edition. Richard, thank you so much for sharing your passion, your knowledge today uh, with our Women Get On Board community. Uh, to find out more about Women Get On Board, you can go to womengetonboard.ca. Join our movement. We're more than 850 members strong.